a lot of criticism as Israel moves towards the south after they told Palestinians in the north to flee to the south for safety. Is there anywhere that is safe in southern Gaza right now for civilians? Definitely. We, we've designated specific safe zones that we have shared with others, with the United States, with the United Nations and others. Uh, we don't want to see Palestinian civilians caught up in the crossfire between the Israeli Defense Forces and the Hamas terrorists. And we've specified these zones and we've shared the maps with others, as I've said. And as the fighting now starts, we've kept a, a humanitarian corridor open so people who were late to move out can still move out. We simply don't want to see civilians caught up in the crossfire. We spoke yesterday, uh, Mr. Regev, with James Jeffrey, chair of the Middle East program at the Wilson Center, and a voice of experience in diplomacy, former U.S. ambassador to Iraq and Turkey. He spoke to the priorities that the IDF holds as it looks to the south. I'd like for you to hear what he said, and we'll have you respond. Here's the ambassador. They see their number one goal as an existential goal, a right now goal, of destroying Hamas as a military offensive force and as the governance of Gaza. They've succeeded pretty much in the north, which is why they say they're rounding that operation up. Now they're trying in the south. That will be tougher because the bulk of the population is now there and it's a small area. How tough will that be? And is the U.S. asking for too much? When civilians move, Hamas follows them. How are you supposed to root out Hamas? <clears throat> and is it even possible while protecting civilians as this turns to southern Gaza? So he's exactly right, Jeffrey, uh, um, that our goal is to destroy Hamas's military machine so it can never inflict the sort of pain it did on Israel as it did on October 7th. But also our goal is, of course, to remove it from power, uh, just as the United States ended uh, the territorial enclaves that ISIS controlled in Syria and Iraq, we will end uh, Hamas's control of the Gaza enclave. And that's ultimately, obviously, it's good for Israel because we'll not have this terrorist threat on our southern border. And Israeli families won't have to worry about terrorists crossing over the frontier in the middle of, no of the night to butcher their people. But it ultimately will also be good for the people of Gaza, you know, Hamas has been in power in Gaza for 16 years. And what have they brought the people of Gaza? Pain, suffering, bloodshed, poverty. I can't think of anything good that Hamas has brought them. No, but right now, the death toll is mounting. We don't need to tell you. It's north of 15,000. That is certainly not good for the Palestinian people. And the U.N. came out today and said, quote, there are no safe places. Are you concerned about what Lloyd Austin said over the weekend, the U.S. Defense uh, Secretary, cautioning Israel that potentially you can cause a strategic defeat because you are potentially pushing Palestinians into the hands of Hamas? So we think the opposite will happen. Of course, we agree with the Secretary of Defense. We've got to be careful. We're fighting in an urban uh, environment, and we've got to be as surgical as is humanly possible in what is ultimately a, a complex combat situation. But those numbers you quoted before, they are put out by the Hamas-controlled uh, uh, Ministry of Health in Gaza, all those numbers. And then have you believe that Israel has only killed civilians and we haven't killed a senior Hamas uh, terrorist? That's obviously not true. So how uh, many how many Hamas terrorists have you, have you killed versus civilians? What is the Israeli numbers? So we, we've killed thousands of Hamas terrorists. Um, uh, and when this is over and the fog of war, Anne-Marie, is behind us, and we can be more precise because at the moment, you know, we're in the middle of a combat and, you know, when you blow up an underground bunker, you know if there were, you don't know if there were 10 people in there or 50 people in there. Yeah? So we can only estimate. But we're pretty sure in Israel that when this is over and the dust has settled and you will see the number of uh, collateral damage compared to the, to the people that we wanted to kill, the Hamas terrorists, that actually our numbers will compare favorably when, to, to U.S. numbers when you fought ISIS in places like Iraq and Syria. Look, we'd like to see not a single civilian caught up in the crossfire. We don't want to see a single uh, civilian uh, uh, killed. But there hasn't been a war in modern history that, that hasn't happened. Uh, and so if you compare Israel to perfection, of course, we fall short. But ultimately, in the real world, yes, as a democracy, we are committed to keeping civilian casualties to a bare minimum. And that's what we're trying to do.